Okay, welcome back. We're going to have a little bit of a crossover here, transmission and steering. Uh, we're going to be leaving steering shortly. This is a swivel pin housing, or the uh, CV joint housing, and the CV joint runs in here with oil. If you have leaks that seem to be excessive, then what you'll find is that you'll be losing fluid and the CV joint could be in danger of running dry. The steering also depends on bearings. You have the bottom bearing and also a top bearing or a bush. These need to be lubricated, otherwise it will affect your steering. This one here is leaking. It was washed about three weeks ago. I've run it around and we can see that there is definitely a leak. Compared to the other side, which only has a minor weep, which is quite normal, so this housing here either has oil or the EP00 grease in it, or it is dry. It takes a fair bit of effort to get to a CV joint because you have to strip everything off, the brakes, the hub, and then the stub before you can get to the CV joint. It's probably the most labor intensive job on the vehicle regarding axles. Now these have to be in good condition. They rely on being treated well and having a lubrication there. Mechanics rule of thumb, if oil can come out, then water and grit can definitely get in. Regularly check to make sure that the chrome on the surface of these ball joints is not flaking off and there's no rust apparent. If there is, then the whole unit needs to be replaced. <laughs> axle has a diff and it has a prop shaft which is fitted the same way that the rear prop shaft is with four bolts okay the bolts also need checking from time to time to make sure that they're not loose if they do come loose they wear the flange and the bolt holes causes damage so check them with the spanner make sure they're tight also we want to be checking for spline play and lift the lift will occur up here, which will be the output of the transfer box. And it's worth lifting it up to see if the bearing has play. All right, so with the front axle, as with the rear axle, we've already shown you how to check the spline play. You do it like this, and this is an indication that the splines are worn. Prop shafts US. Checking the UJ joints like this to see if there's any wear in them. And you can see this one's worn, so that is US and needs replacing immediately. You should always check to see where the slider is on the front prop shaft because sometimes people fit them around the wrong way and the slider will be towards the gearbox end on the front and on the rear it will also be towards the gearbox end like so. So once you've looked at your prop shaft and you've assessed the condition of it, Next thing to do would be checking the backlash on a differential unit. Now the backlash is where you have slack on the pinion between the pinion and the crown wheel and you can see this one's about just over eighth of a turn. I'm not happy with this, the backlash needs to be removed from this diff. Okay, so you can check the backlash with the wheels on the ground and just turn the prop shaft to assess what you've got there. Another way I'm going to show you, and this is checking the half shafts, the diff, the operation of the diff, is to first of all jack the vehicle up and get it on axle stands. What we're going to be checking here is the movement and the operation of the differential to see that it's actually working properly. This will be on the front and the rear axle and we'll be including the differential in the transfer box as well. Okay, it's always nice to have large axle stands at hand when you're owning a Land Rover. They always come in useful. However, you don't need five ton ones. You can have three ton ones, which add up to six ton across the axle, evenly spaced. And in this case, we've got two sets of axle stands, rear and front, evenly spaced on the axle. Okay, so slipping underneath the motor get yourselves in position first because I presume that most of you guys are going to be working on the floor on your driver in your garage anyway so we're on a crawler board here the first thing we want to do is to turn the prop shaft okay what we'll see is the differential will be balancing out the speed of the road wheels that's, that's its job and you'll see that one will turn quicker than the other okay 
They should roughly go in the same direction, but one's going faster and the other one's not hardly moving. This is quite normal because the differential is there to accommodate for the different speeds that the wheel will go when going around corners. Now, if you have your tire, grab one wheel and you turn it, you'll find that the other side will go the opposite way and the prop shaft will near enough if you hold it stay still. That also is normal. If the prop shaft turns at the same speed and refuses to stop, then the diff is US. Okay, so you can see that I'm holding the prop shaft, wheels go around the other way. Okay, so I'm going to roll over and put my foot on one of the wheels, and you'll see that I'm turning the other wheel. Now, the wheel should stay still, and the prop and the wheel will turn. So if I did it the other way and turn the wheel with my foot, hold one with my hand, I'll feel the prop shaft go around. Generally, this is just checking to make sure that the diff is spinning at least one wheel. If you find there's an abnormality, it will be because the wheel will want to turn and it will be stiff. That means the diff has a big problem, usually within the differential unit itself and not the crown wheel and pinion. Right, so let's repeat this again so you get it. First of all, I'm going to check the backlash on the prop. Okay. Second thing I'm going to do is turn the prop shaft, watch the wheels go round in the same direction, and they won't be going round at the same speed. Okay, so you can see that. Next thing to do is to turn one of the wheels, hold the prop shaft, and watch the other wheel go round the other way. Third thing to do is to hold one of the wheels and turn the wheel and watch the prop shaft, then hold the prop shaft to make sure it's stiff. So this can be done on the front axle as well, doing exactly the same thing, possibly laying in a different position. Okay, so I don't need to repeat myself with this. Next thing to do is check the transfer box differential, and we need to make sure that the differential is out and not locked. What we're going to check is the output of the transfer box, and this is done by turning the prop shaft. And you can do the rear one with the handbrake drum. Okay, so we'll have a look at this. First of all, with the diff lock not engaged, you'll see that the front prop shaft is not turning when you're turning the back one. It doesn't mean that it's not working. It just means that the bias of power can either go to the front or the back. It's not evenly distributed. However, when you push the diff lock into the locked position, which is to your left as you're sitting in the driver's seat, you will be able to turn both of them together and it will turn like so. Okay, so that diff is now locked. If you understand diff locking principles, then you don't have a problem. Now what we're looking for here is that it operates properly and also looking for backlash in the diff itself. Now you can see that there's actually quite a lot of backlash here. If you notice the reaction time between the front and the rear prop, okay, we've got quite a lot of movement. So I'd say that this is actually beyond borderline and needs repairing. Because of the slack in here, this would be more than likely a reason that the transmission knocks as you take up drive. Okay, so ready for the Star Wars theme? I'm just going to explain a loss of drive. could either be a transfer box in neutral, broken CV joint or shattered half shaft, broken pinion, a stripped down pinion and crown wheel, drive flange spline stripped, damaged transfer box, clutch centre ripped out or broken output shaft. Also, the prop shaft missing, which happens, a gearbox main shaft, a spline stripped. We'll explain that in later tutorials. Juddering transmission, the crown and pin are damaged, planetary gears are damaged, pinion bearings failing, prop shaft UJ1 with damaged CV, joint failing, clutch judder, transfer box damaged, prop shaft UJ dry, there's a point to remember, prop shaft unbalanced. Noisy transmission, could be worn bearings, worn gearing, excessive backlash in the gearings, incorrect crown and pinion meshing or lack of lubrication. Knock on take up, worn suspension component, excessive backlash, worn gearing, prop shaft UJ failing, worn main shaft splines, gearbox to input gear.